Versatility is key to your setup. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Today I want to talk about this kind of stuff and the versatility of it. A lot of people, you know, this is the standard ones you see in all this kind of setup. So why do I have my gear set up the way I do? Well, because versatility. And a lot of people are commenting about these particular mag pouches, kind of what I'm gonna talk mostly about with the setup. Um, but before I get into the video, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, share the videos, comment below. Also, if you wanna stay warm when you're out doing the things, check the link in the description below for Fortress Clothing. Their base layers, their extreme jackets, stuff like that. Two thumbs up, awesome stuff. You gotta get yourselves ready for winter and that's portable warmth, portable heat. So check it out. Also join us on Patreon. I haven't mentioned that in a long time. Um, links in the description below also for that. We got a Patreon. Yes, we're doing awesome stuff there. And um, if you like the videos, you want to support, help out, do those kind of things. There's a little thanks in the heart down there. It's called a super thanks. You can click on that, donate. It's kind of like buy a coffee or something like that, you know. It really helps. It does. We're, you know, we're limited and uh, trying to make do get by like most people are. So don't feel pressured, but anyway, I just want to tell you guys about that really quick before I get into the video. All right, so the video. People talk about these mag pouches and how expensive they are. These are um, the, uh, pff, of course I forget now. Um, just a sec. Okay, brain fart over. High speed gear, HSGI, mag pouches. Yes, they are about, 30 to 35 dollars each okay that's expensive for a mag pouch but let me talk about what you get out of it and actually how you can save money by going with mag pouches like this versus standard mag pouches because versatility is key if you are only running an arkansas weapon platform you know these ones then it really doesn't matter how your kit is how you're set up um but if you have other systems, you know, that use ones like this or that use ones like this or that use ones like this, then you start getting into the fact that you have to have all these different setups. You have to have a different carrier and pouches, IFAC, all the stuff on there gets very expensive. So if you really, if you have these different platforms, these different defensive weapon systems, then you might want to think about getting these because, okay, say 35 bucks each. Okay, an inexpensive single one of these, 15 bucks maybe, 16 bucks, so about half the price. But if you are running specific to the platform, meaning specific to these mag uh, pouches, then what you have to do is you have to have a different carrier for it, an IFAC, all the stuff. So it becomes very expensive getting all these setups. And then you got all these carriers and all the stuff laying around. You got to have room to store it. You got to have money. And you really need to make sure that all those setups are set up identically so that when your muscle memory is good to go no matter which one you put on. So you got to set up identical because you, you need to know where this is. You need to know where this is. You need to know where all the things are so that you can grab them and use them without looking down trying to find stuff because when stuff is going south, um, you want to make sure that you can optimize your performance. So with that said, it's actually less expensive to go this route if you have various magazines. Why? I will show you why. If I want to swap, I take these out and these mag, these pouches are expandable. See, like this. All right, let me start off with the next smallest one, which are these, 74 mags. Bam. There you go. Now I'm running a 74. Yes, they do stick up a little bit here. So the interference with what you, if you have anything up here, becomes a little bit of an issue. But the way I grab them, it doesn't. Cause I grab like that, I grab like this, I grab like this. And I use them, I train with them all the time. 
So the different systems, that is. Um, so that's very important. Get it out like this and rock it in, you know. That is what it is. And it fits. It works fine. All right. So you see that adaptability. So they're not just for the other kind because these have that, you know, lip on the back, which still works fine in this. All right. Let's check out the next biggest one as far as magazine size. All right. Pop it in. Pop it in. And pop it in. There you go. Now, there is a little bit of a clearance issue like that, you know, where that, there. So grab it, still get it out just fine. Um, put the mag in, just fine. So, if you want to have versatility in your platform and the ability to run these different systems, then you may want to think about having pouches like this on your setup. So you don't have to buy all this other stuff, especially if you're talking, you know, the plates inside there for each setup or Maybe you have one set of those and a bunch of different carriers, or maybe it's chest rigs you're talking about. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Um, if you really, I think, I mean, plates, plate carriers, yes, I'm not going to get into that debate. But if you just want to get like a, a condor chest panel, not the little panel, but the, the one that goes a little bit more farther around, and you could put six or eight of these across the front of that. And then it's nice and lightweight, and you have the versatility of running all these different platforms that will save you money over time uh, depending on if you have other platforms all right so let's go to the largest that's the big boy that is an FAL so you know you got to kind of put it in but when you're putting your mag in it's not really time dependent so it, you know you just got to kind of go like that and these are um, 20s by the way like I said, it takes kind of a little bit different, you know. It's not as smooth as getting in the, uh, the Arkansas mags, but you just fold it like that. There we go. Just fine. Works fine. These got lots of clearance because they're a lot shorter. I could probably one, run the 30 version of this and be just fine also. Um, so this is versatility in your kit. If you're out there training often, you'll figure things like this out. If you are running different systems, different platforms. Um, say you have an SR25 and say you have a regular Arkansas in like, uh, you know, five, you know, five, six, those kind of things. Then same pouches, interchangeability. If you have a, um, you know, a 308, if you have uh, 762 by 39, 762 or 545 by 39, uh, 556, it doesn't really matter. Those are kind of the, the four standard things. If you have like, this is for FAL. If you have the uh, M1A version, almost the same, identical. It'll work, it'll work just fine in here. Um, I can't think of any mags that won't fit in here. Probably even those um, larger like, uh, um, semi um, 12 gauge ones, if you run in one of those kind of systems, they would probably fit in here too. I haven't specifically tried myself, but I love the versatility of these. The versatility is awesome. And of course, it's a little, it's a little stiffer to get out, um, but because of the heavier weight, I like that. So that when I'm out doing what I'm doing, they're not going to fall out. I really like this setup, and like I said, it's, they seem like they're expensive, but if you're talking about having setups for multiple uh, defensive tools that are chambered in different, you know, things, then definitely think about this, look into this, save yourself some money, actually, and get a really good quality product to go with it. I've used these in training extensively, um, and in the service also, extensively and they stand the test of time they work well it doesn't matter if you're swapping out what you're putting in there uh, they just work so it, they work really good and really well and uh, yeah it's a good option to have because that flexibility is key especially if you're running these different systems so it's just a video I just want to show you guys this show you guys by your with your own eyes you can see that they all fit in there all four 
different carriers, seed holders, fit in here just fine. Um, and you know, there's a little there's a little bungee tension on the back here where you can either loosen it up, you know, or tighten it for the mag for the you know what's going in there. Make sure you do that and set it up properly. What I like doing is I set it up for these. Um, how I like the retention on these, and then when I put the larger ones in because they're heavier, then yes, they're a little bit more difficult to get out slightly, but under stress and, and it's it's no worry. I've never had any issues with it. Um, this is just something I want you guys to think about. Um, set yourselves up properly. And like I mentioned, train, 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 train. Real world, as realistic as possible, um, with as many variables in as possible. High heart rate, high stress, bad weather. It doesn't matter. Get out and train. Use your gear. If you want to be effective and if you want to survive the fight, you got to do this stuff. And this isn't about LARPing and airsofting. Well, actually, I like how Risky Chrissy talks about like uh, going out and doing tactical training, how it's basically LARPing. It, basically, it is, if you think about it. Um, it's just um, more real world and has real world implications. It's not just go, like going out and going airsofting. Um, I don't airsoft um, because I believe it builds in training scars. I believe it could be used in a CQB environment, uh, you know, as a training tool, but definitely not out in the woods, no, because one of those little BBs hits one of those little branches or something like that and deflects, and that's ludicrous. That's not even close to real world, uh, whereas a real round would go right through that. So, no, nah, don't do that. Um, so if you want to call me a LARPer, call me a LARPer. I, I train regularly, and if you want to call that LARPing, fine, whatever, but I feel it is necessary for us to be ready for what is coming, trained and equipped. And this is part of it, the equipment to go along with the training. So have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.